Thank you for your interest in Medicare cost reporting. You have access part two in a four-part webinar series discussing Medicare cost reporting for critical access hospitals. These webinars are designed for individuals who may not be familiar with the Medicare cost report and are hoping to learn more about it. For additional information, please access parts one, three, and four of the cost reporting webinar series, as well as other focused educational webinars sponsored by the Wisconsin Office of Rural Health. Part two will discuss the Worksheet A series. So Worksheet A is basically where we are presenting all of our expenses. So Worksheet A is all expenses. Worksheet C is all revenue. That's the, the basic concept here. So Worksheet A is broken down into multiple different worksheets within this series. Uh, you have Worksheet A, and this is where we are reporting all of our, our gross expenses, our gross operating expenses. And you'll see in a couple of slides here, we, we look at what Worksheet A actually looks like, um, but just to know before we look there, columns one and two are where we're reporting all of our expenses. Column one is where we report all salary, and column two is where we report all other expenses. So those are the two main components of Worksheet A. Uh, just to note, Worksheet A must reconcile to your internal or audited financial statements, uh, and that's something that reconciliation, if it is different, is a required form to submit with your cost report submission, um, and dates back to a Worksheet S2 question. Um, so we have to basically certify that our expenses that we're reporting are accurate and you know, and jive with what we're reporting on our internal or audited financial statements. As we're moving across Worksheet A, we have the ability to reclassify expenses between cost centers, and we do have uh, Medicare requires us to adjust certain costs off of the cost report. Um, and we'll, we'll take a closer look at both of those uh, in these next couple of slides. So again, just looking through the Worksheet A columns, which we can see here, you can see at the top, column one, we're reporting all of our salaries, column two, all of our other expenses, column three is the sum of one and two, column four is where we report all of our reclassifications, uh, and you can see there, we always wanna make sure that that sums to zero at the bottom in line 200 there. Uh, the reclassified trial balance, so the sum of three and four is reported in column five. Column six is where we are reporting all of our adjustments that we make to expenses to get to column seven, which is the net expenses for allocation. So that's your total Medicare allowable expenses. So the way this is pretty much broken down, um, you can see lines one through 23 are your general service cost centers. So these are all your administrative cost centers, all your overhead cost centers. And those are all found in that top section, the general service cost center. So eventually on worksheet B, which we'll cover in the next video, we show how we take different statistics and allocate out all of these overhead cost centers down to all of the revenue producing cost centers, which are contained within lines 30 through 194. Um, and those are all the non-reimbursable cost centers, but for the most part, that's what we're going to be doing eventually and we'll, we'll like I said detail that in the next video but just wanted to show you the basic breakdown of how these different expenses are reported in the different cost centers and when I'm saying cost center I should I should allude to what I mean if you look down the furthest left side on this worksheet a you'll see one, two, four, five, seven, those are what we call cost centers. So those are just different lines on the cost report. Most of these are standard uh, cost centers that Medicare requires you to use. Um, you, you can request to use uh, specific cost centers, new cost centers, uh, what we call fragmenting cost centers, if we want to break it down into a little bit more detail. But for the most part, these are Medicare prescribed uh, departments that we must report the data in. We'll jump across to A6 now, which going back here again is reported in column four there. So what A6 provides us with is the opportunity to make sure that we are achieving proper matching of revenue and expenses. So there are, you know, some, some common expense reclassifications that we typically see surrounding uh, interest and depreciation. Those are popular items to reclass amongst the different cost centers. 
Worksheet A will always include the capital cost centers first. So those are always recorded in line one and two. One being uh, building and fixture, depreciation, interest costs, any, any capital type costs. And lot, call, or excuse me, row two is where all your movable equipment uh, depreciation interest expenses are recorded there. So that's a popular reclassification that a lot of times we'll make uh, to either direct assign those depreciation expenses to a certain cost center for whatever reason, but ultimately our goal is to achieve proper matching of revenue and expenses so we can properly calculate our cost to charge ratio, which you'll see in video three becomes a very important uh, thing to do to make sure that we're matching these expenses and revenue properly. Flipping over to worksheet A8, uh, this again is where we are creating some adjustments that Medicare requires us to make to get to our Medicare allowable expenses. Um, these adjustments can increase or decrease our costs depending on the type of adjustment that it is, um, but for the most part the normal the normal offset here is going to be a decrease. Other things that we should note here, or one, one thing to consider is we do have to, even though we're offsetting expenses here, a lot of times there are some types of revenue, some types of services that Medicare considers non-allowable, and there's not really a good way to calculate those direct expenses that, that create that revenue. For instance, if you're looking at a cafeteria revenue, for instance, Cafeteria revenue is non-allowable from, from Medicare's perspective, so we need to remove an estimated amount of related expenses from the cost report. We want to make sure that Medicare is not reimbursing us for those expenses because it's not a revenue-producing department of the hospital. So the best way to do that, or what Medicare basically allows you to do, is every dollar of revenue that you're producing, they're assuming it costs the hospital one dollar to produce that one dollar of revenue so we can go with that one-to-one -one ratio and just offset all of that revenue for the cafeteria instead of coming up with some kind of complex formula to determine how much it actually costs to produce that uh, that cafeteria revenue so that's kind of the easy button approach that medicare allows us to implement here so as we're going down in column one we have to identify if we're offsetting revenue or expenses using uh, an A for expenses and B for revenue. Uh, so that's how we identify what we're offsetting. So these, this list is just some of the, the typical adjustments that we do see on worksheet A8. Um, like I mentioned before, cafeteria revenue is non-allowable. Uh, interest expense is non-allowable up to the extent uh, that there is investment income. So I should say investment income is actually non-allowable, but you only have to offset it up to your level of interest expense. Um, then any interest expense incurred on unnecessary borrowing is excluded from that offset. Uh, other common ones, rebates and discounts are non-allowable. Patient telephones and cable TV expenses are non-allowable. Lobbying costs are non-allowable. And miscellaneous income is, is non-allowable as well. These are also just a couple of other non-allowable expenses that are pretty standard. Um, advertising is one that I would like to touch on. That one is a little bit of a gray area, um, and it has kind of changed throughout time. Obviously, you can see yellow page. So now we kind of consider the hospital's website to be their type of yellow pages. That informational item where people go to see to get their phone numbers, to see their list of providers, a list of services. So we want to make sure that we are considering all of those website costs as allowable expenses. We wouldn't consider that to be advertising. Anything that is just informational in nature is allowable. Anything that you're trying to basically market the hospital or in any fashion encourage people to come to your hospital to use those hospital services, those are the types of areas that we're going to get into that are going to be non-allowable. But again, good thing to, to review in detail with your preparer to make sure that you are recording uh, your, your advertising expense offset properly. These are just some items that we do not need to offset as aid adjustments um, because they are basically taken care of elsewhere on the cost report. HIT incentive payments, uh, which a lot of people were receiving in the past and you may still be recognizing some of that revenue now. Um, any contributions or grant income you do not need to offset. Uh, any gains and losses on disposal of equipment is another thing you do not have to offset. Won't spend a lot of time on A81. This is just 
the, over the cost allocation from any home office cost. So this isn't applicable to everybody, but if you do have a home office, this is where your related organization costs would be reported. A2, uh, this is another offset, a, a, wor a worksheet that reports offsetting expenses. Um, and this is solely related to physician compensation. Um, so a lot of times we will to achieve that proper um, offset or the, or the proper matching of revenue and expenses, we have to offset all of the professional fee revenue because we're paid on a fee schedule. So to achieve that proper matching, if we don't remove the related physician expenses are going to be inflated since we're removing that related revenue. So on A2, this is the worksheet that we use to offset all of the physician compensation. There's different things that we can do here, especially uh, when it relates to the emergency room. Uh, we can complete emergency room time studies to determine exactly is going to be allowable for any of that standby time. That is really the biggest piece of, or the biggest opportunity in A2 to make sure that we are only reporting, uh, especially in the ER, we're only reporting the expenses that relate to time that physician is actually spending with patients in the emergency room. Any any standby time will be allowed. Other things to note here is uh, physician expenses and the RHCs are exempt from A2. We do not need to report those on A2. Well, that pretty much covers worksheet A, a uh, very high level look. Thank you for your time. Please stick with us and uh, video three will cover the overhead allocation step down on worksheet B.